Right. It must, this is the uh, 6th of April, 1976. Some of it is a bit um, old fashioned for today, but I'm, I think fundamentally it is true. I'm, I'm, the people who were in power in 1976 were different. And I'm not sure what I think about uh, Mr. Putin. I actually have certain sympathy with him and with Russia. And uh, I don't um, think they're as bad as our politicians are making out. There was um, somebody, I was watching an interview with some very um, intelligent, very deep thinking American academics some years ago. And they, said, they repeated Paul Wolfowitz's statement, which was, we are going to destroy seven Middle Eastern nations and then we're going after the Russians. Why? And look at the mess we are having. So we are in the middle of um, some kind of uh, political something, which some very bad men, I think, are trying to organise. And... Uh, Anyway, we'll see. See what you think about this. This was written um, 6th of April 1976, and I've called it a warning for mankind. It must first be remembered that humanity is not only restricted to this planet. There are many, many other planets very similar to this, working on a similar timescale with their own suns and moons, and their supporting fellow planets. This is an important fact. Some of these are considerably behind this planet in progression and understanding, and some considerably beyond it. The nearest one is very near in terms of space travel, which will not be possible for this planet for at least a hundred physical years, even if this important message, which it is hoped will be accepted by its people, works in the way that the lords of creation hope that it will. This planet, whose inhabitants are exactly similar to those in this near planet, and who have been subjected to the same dark forces, the same kind of history, and all those things that have happened on this planet Earth, they have already received their message and have acted upon it, and have progressed in the last 200 physical years to a point that would amaze the inhabitants of this planet. That is, if it were possible for a visit to be made. They have come to full realisation of the folly of violence, the destruction caused by foolish ideological modes of government, of hatred, of fighting wars, and the stupidity that runs so much of the physical world. Very many people, tired of the folly of mankind, and believing everything that they read in the Bible without considering the kind of people who wrote it, believe that the planet Earth belongs to the devil. This could never be so. Planet Earth and others like it are carefully created, the physical home for mankind, in which it is hoped that he will progress to understand the true nature of life and living. The part that could be said belongs to the devil, if such an entity truly existed, are the parts of the human spirit that persuade mankind into the folly that usually destroys him and his earthly home. If this message cannot be got through to people of this planet now, the next few years will bring disaster and calamity to its people that to all intents and purposes it will become as part of the devil's kingdom and life within it will be the most miserable that anyone now living in it can possibly imagine. So it is with all humanities that they must come to progression that they must come to progression with the knowledge given to them of their own free will with understanding and peace in their hearts what a terrible place this world would eventually become those who govern the vast countries of china and the former soviet russia and others working always against their people to try to govern and run human, human society with tyranny and a powerful iron grip such will it be everywhere if such people with such foolish ideas ever gain complete control of this planet Earth, as they are within very great danger of doing at this present time. It is the plan of creation that all mankind shall learn to have compassion for those less well placed than themselves, not only within their own immediate country, but throughout the world as a whole. 
that all countries of the world shall draw nearer together, that they shall tackle the problems of world government together with intelligence, wisdom, and a real wish to bring peace and prosperity to all men, that they should not be insular, imagining that they can lock themselves away from the rest of the world and ignore the desperate situation of the destitute in other lands. Let all those who believe that charity belongs only at home remember the terrible might, the power and the cruelty that brought the prisoner of war camps of the last world war. Nothing can be more terrible than the might of an enormous number of those grown desperate by hunger, poverty, want, disease and despair. In their plight they will turn to anything, usually belligerence and war of the most desperate kind. And in the end everyone is suffering from the effects of horror more terrible than in their folly in ignoring these people they could never have imagined would come to them. A plan has been worked out by those of us here, only the barest outline of which has been given to the writer. In the past, England produced some of the greatest soldiers, sailors and airmen of all time, and this is still so today. These men have proved themselves to have brilliant, clear, good minds of those capable of, of organising others. Today there is no place for them in the armies of glittering magnificence set on paths of destruction. Military might there must be, navies there must be, military aircraft there must be, but to be as a part of a world police force, a force run throughout the world by those who have this particular kind of brilliant military mind. I've got another dictation further on about um, the sort of... Uh, sort of vehicles that could be used by these people instead of these stupid um, aircraft carriers and how these things could be run. I, I think always the um, British Army and the Navy and, uh, and men within those, uh, those forces have shown themselves able to... Um, to make alliances with the people of the, of the different countries where they're stationed and, you know, treat them as equals without interfering with the way they live, which is important in my view. Anyway, to continue, in the past their brilliance has been used not to bring peace and salvation to humanity, but only to fight wars, wars which perhaps at the time had to be fought. Now any such war, even with the concerted might of all the Western wealthy nations gathering themselves together against the communist nations, could bring nothing but the greatest sorrow the world could ever know, a horror the like of which very few living people could ever begin to imagine. We have another plan. Everyone knows how so many of the money sent to the countries of destitute people is lost and misused mismanaged and never in the end really reaches those it was meant to help. Like, apparently, only 20% of the um, arms which have been sent to Ukraine at the moment can be traced. Where's it going? And the poor Ukrainian people, oh, what, what are they fighting for? Everyone knows something of the kind of people who govern these poor and destitute peoples, many of whom have barely achieved even the most basic forms of civilization, and still turn to such things as idol worship and voodoo to alleviate their suffering. Their leaders cannot be forced into a sensible acceptance of aid for their destitute millions, or assistance in wise ways of farming their land, employing their people, and all those many things that will protect them from the eventual tyranny of those who with force and def desperate means will very soon enslave them with promises of prosperity and freedom from want, only to mould them into the ty tyrannical grip of communism, when they will have no choice but to do as their conquerors will force them to do. The leaders of such people who believe themselves to have power, who present themselves to the world dressed up in glittering military uniforms with many medals to which everyone, including themselves, know that they have no right whatsoever, have yet a great regard for England, for the late Queen of England and those who serve in England's forces, and in whom many years of service have proved themselves to be capable of wearing such uniforms with distinction and have gained military medals honestly and fairly in the service of that Queen. To them, any such people represent the monarchy of England, who still is held in great regard by many, loved by many, and in whose name much can be accomplished in a peaceful way. 
So we here suggest a royal commission for all the charities that have been set up to help these destitute nations and hope that military men and women would come forward to serve in them and that they should wear a uniform and their medals to which the many years, their many years of service they have proved themselves to be entitled. They would wear these for the benefit of the impression it will create in the minds and hearts of the rulers of primitive people. I mean, we all have a procession, a, a, you know, a, a, a procession and a, something smart, don't we? Only these kind of people are the ones who can hope to accomplish the plan which we hope will evolve. These must be given ranks higher than that in which they served not for their own honour, but for the greater impression it will create in the minds and hearts of the poorer people and their leaders and the rulers in this world. This is another part of the plan for the prosperity and peace and freedom from slavery of communism and tyranny, which will soon engulf these poorer nations if the Western world continues to ignore their plight and continued destitution. In recent times there have been many also who have attacked the monarchy, have insisted that it should be increasingly brought to penury by crippling taxes. Let everyone who is governing, who has the governing of England and its prosperity at heart come to understand that the monarchy of England is of great importance. Nothing would so delight the dark powers presently at work in your world to see the monarchy ruined and deposed. This itself would bring this country nearer to communism and the overthrow of everything that is worth worthwhile, peaceful and onward going. And we now have a Labour government who are busy making us all poorer by the moment. Let, us, let all attempts to destroy and overthrow the monarchy of England be foiled. There is no other country in the world that can boast of a personality held in such high regard all over the world as that of the late Queen, who brought this little country of England with such great regard. Without it, much of this plan would fail. Royalty is of great importance, and I have another dictation about that. It's hoped that everyone who sits in the government in England will come finally and irrevocably to this important understanding and foil the attempts of any who try to destroy the power of the monarchy and restrict the means with which they must maintain their impressive and glittering household and present themselves to the world in a way that persuades the people in it that the impressive history and achievements of the past when Britain had an empire which brought prosperity to many in a peaceful way and created the name of Great Britain, which it was in those times, and indeed that it still is, can continue to be in a modern world instead of the crumbling, ineffective little, innate, little nation, beset by political squabbles, financial disasters every, of every kind, and, drawing, and daily drawing nearer to a hopeless collapse which it is beginning to present to the world at large. Let the royal families have greater resources. Let them present to the world the glittering spectacle of Britain's well-regimented military forces in parades which will be essential for this event. That the rest of the world may see and wonder and place the little country of England on a pedestal from which it is hoped it will never again topple. There are many reasons why it was England chosen to be given this message and to share it with the rest of the world's humanity all of which it is hoped will be taken very much to heart, seriously considered and remembered by the people of England and by others also, especially those who live in Europe and America and eventually, as time passes, other countries in every other part of the world. There are many people of today who look with scorn upon the exploits of the past, the empire builders, the pioneers in all fields, the people in government and in all walks of life who have fought for privileges of today's ordinary people of England, people of determination, character and resolve, strength and integrity, all things that are lacking in so, of, in so many of the indolent, overfed, unhealthy, over-entertained people living in England today, who are content to sit back and see their country slowly crumbling into a mere shadow of the wonderful country it should be, and which it has every opportunity of being again. It is hoped that if this can be brought about, some of those living in this little country who have character, resolve, strength, integrity and understanding will rise up and see to it that their little country of England does not become crushed under the weight of a bad government that tries to scorn the wonderful achievement of the past, cast the good that it did achieve aside and 
initiate such people and imitate such people as Lenin and Karl Marx, who could little know the sorrow they were building up for their own people. And so it is that when our book is written and all the facts found, the people of England will be encouraged to look again at the history of their country, at the history of their own royal family, and perhaps very many of the genealogical histories of their own families, all of which information is carefully stored away by those in the beginning, who in the beginning had the nobility of mind to realise that mankind should care about his own history and should take an interest in who he is, where his ancestors sprang from, very many of whom, all he did but know, would be part of the history of many of his own previous incarnations, because as many as are beginning to realise, reincarnation is a fact. As the political situation started to deteriorate in, in Europe after the devastating war fought against Napoleon, which took 14 years, and I think just as these wars now um, are being extended, I think the one against Napoleon was also. I believe Hitler took, um, asked 17 times to make peace. And the general mismanagement of governments, many of the wealthy, mostly Jewish families and others with wealth, fled to America and some to England and other countries where they would be safe. How much better it would have been for Europe if they could have stayed and helped their country and carefully nursed it back to economic health. From the 1830s onwards, you have the gradual decline in everything in the European situation, which gradually led to the first major world war. History in all of this, the his, history in all of this is of great importance, and to ignore the past only means that mankind continues to repeat the same mistakes he has made before, and always to his detriment. It is hoped that in the future more people will look into the achievements of their ancestors, some of whom will only be themselves in previous lives and take pride in the history of their country, and realise the folly of regarding past glories with nothing but repugnance, for the present must be rebuilt on the stepping stones of the glories and mistakes of the past, without which there could be no present and no future. Let those who deride the past and throw scorn on the achievements of the pioneering pit spirits of those who have gone before in this little country of England, consider if they faced with such adversity as those in the past, would they achieve anything like a similar record or simply fail? When all is revealed, let the world look with admiration at those within these shores who have with ingenuity and not a little brilliance brought new discoveries into the world whose task it was to realise that the noble horse was not the only way in which mankind could transport himself from one place to another, but there must be other ways, faster and more convenient and cheaper. This they achieved and gave employment to many. They, will not con they were not content to sit back and look at what they had discovered, but continue to improve upon it until you have a world in which mankind thinks nothing of moving with great speed from one side of the world to the other. Now has come the time when this world's humanity must realise that in its attempts at advancement it all too often makes the most difficult path and does not look at the most simple things of all. Things just waiting to be discovered, things which are staring it in the face, simple facts which are learned in the schoolroom, simple facts which most children learned in the science lessons and other fields, but once learned, soon forgotten, and their real importance missed. People of today speculate often as to whether there are other planets like their own, people like their own, with people like themselves. Whether the round spacecraft mentioned so often by so many people really exists and the strange stories which seem hardly possible to invent really are true. Several books have been written, even with some photographs and illustrations to support the claims of those who write them. The educated, civilised world at large, disinterested, ignores such stories and prefers to disbelieve, having never seen such things themselves. 
Indeed, were those who silently and secretly watch over this planet Earth, both by day and by night, ever to reveal themselves, it would cause a wave of emotion and shock throughout the world which would be contrary to the wishes and the desires of the non-belligerent people who come to watch and would be totally against what they would ever want. They do indeed come to watch. Most of what has been sent are computerized space modules sent by those who, living on a completely different time scale, could not possibly come themselves. They know this perfectly well. They have been recording and processing information regarding this planet for many centuries and know everything there is to know about it. The story of Yuri Geller is all perfectly true, and how little of a stir did this story make, even when shown quite publicly on television. This was exactly their aim, and allowed to take place by the Lords of Creation as an interesting experiment in the stupid incredulity and ignorance of those in this planet. Now everything is alien, so we're ignoring it again. <laughs> It must be revealed once and for all when the book is published that indeed it is all perfectly true and the man Yuri Geller has been used by robots sent to find such a person as he so that the latent energy within his brain could be made use of. This energy can be computerised and it is a fact that careful experiments done by numbers of intelligent people as they will be directed to do in the future will reveal this to be true. But it is important to consider at this point the round spacecraft which have been described so often that anyone with an inquiring mind must come to realise that there must be some truth in these accounts. Never at any time has anyone wondered how such a craft travelling vast distances could be motivated without apparent need for fuel. The fuel used in this planet would take up so much space in any craft and weigh it down to such an extent that it could never travel any distance, and if it ever arrived, it would have no fuel for its return journey. The fuel used is, of course, the most obvious of all, which is simply water, for water is available on all planets that go to make up the physical universe. Finally, once and for all, it must be understood that oil should never be used as a motivating energy. Oil is a valuable and precious resource in this planet, Unfortunately for those living today, was never discovered by the previous civilization. Although well, they discovered many other things and ruined much of what was beautiful in creation's plan for this planet Earth. Had they discovered oil as this civilization has, they would have squandered and misused it in exactly the same way as is being, doing, is being done at this present time. There are many uses for this wonderful substance and many beautiful important things can be made from it. If it is all squandered on mere travel, there will soon be none for the generations which must come after. This in itself is bad, but the worst thing of all, which is never considered and taken seriously, is the folly of pouring out into the world's atmosphere continually by land, sea and air and all the time the poisonous gases produced by the burning of oil in all its forms. It's been discovered already that nicotine, which is a tarry substance, has something to do with cancer in many people. This, on <coughs> this is only one part of the real truth. Indeed, it does have a great deal to do with the cause of cancer. Not only in those that daily inhale this poisonous substance, but to others all around them and to subsequent generations, to others yet unborn. Many important facts concerning this will, it's hoped, be revealed later. Um, they think that actually for men who, uh, who smoke heavily, it's... It, having sex with um, their wives can, in some women, cause um, ovarian cancer. Some people are saying that there's a great deal of health in the um, nicotine plant, but it, I would say the fresh plant, not the way it's used in vapes and smoking cigarettes. Um, to continue... Um, this in itself is bad, but the worst thing of all, which is never considered and taken seriously. Oh, I've said that. Um, worst of all is the continual pollution of oil of all types poured out into the Earth's atmosphere in the form of burning gases, fuel for motorized vehicles, aircraft, aircraft and ships, 
and more and more traver traversing the Earth's surface. If this continues for many more years, the level of pollution will be so high that thousands, millions of people in the civilised countries of the world cannot help but die from an unknown and terrible kind of leukaemia, from which there can be no cure, even with the new knowledge which will shortly be released for all the world to know. There is only one solution to this problem, and here we come to another way in which Britain can lead the world and can bring great prosperity to the little country of England, provided and provided only that those in government and others chosen to work in this event, in this event maintain the utmost secrecy, and that is the separation of oxygen and hydrogen, the separation of water. It must now fall to the government of England to lay aside funds and employ those skilled in such experiments to come to this important discovery. This is the real motivating power, and it can be brought about in a fairly simple way by the means of an electric battery. These are the two gases of a highly inflammable nature that can be used to produce the power needed for true combustion. Again, it is necessary to cast a glance at the many photographs and read again the accounts of those who claim, and many of them are quite genuine, of sightings of the round spacecraft. I have got um, some plans for a very simple kind of um, water-based engine but um, it needs more work, obviously. Now it must be realised why the human head is round, the world is round, the universe shaped like a doughnut is round, and some of the more intelligent astronomers have realised that in, the f in fact there can be only one shape for anything of a motivating nature in the physical world, and that must be this round shape. Almost all motivating engines available in this world at the present time are wasteful of energy, wasteful of food, fuel, and should be regarded as something that has come to the limit of its development. Now is the time to go back to the schoolroom to take another look at the simple gyroscope, the little toy used for amusement by almost every schoolboy. Many people will still have one in the back of the drawer somewhere at home. If not, they can still be purchased cheaply. Follow the instructions, set it in motion and watch it as it moves along a piece of string or hold it spinning in your hand. Feel for yourself the power behind the tiny piece of mechanism. Look under the bonnet of your own motor car and see for yourself the cumbersome, dirty, oily engine that propels your own car. Measure the width inside the bonnet and realise the smallness and the power of a, of a round gyroscope engine powered by the separation of small amounts of water, a new modern engine that would be extremely cheap to run and pollution-free. Now is the time for the government of Great Britain, with complete and utter secrecy, and long before the book is written and published for sale, to begin these experiments. I cannot help thinking that we don't have politicians who have our, our, um, our welfare at heart. There are many in this nation who have great brilliance. They must be found, sworn to secrecy and set to work without delay. Let the little country of England again lead the world in an important advance, and an advance brought to fruition here before it's sold to any other country will bring it great prosperity. Let those two things comment without delay. The separation of water and the gyroscope engine. This is, of course, the only basis upon which any spacecraft can be constructed, with this round shape. Those of today that have been made at great expense and waste of public money could never go far in the universe. Any attempt from this planet to set modules into the universe is a waste of money, and all of the countries that attempt to do so, especially America, should be made to realise this fact without delay. Such monies would be far better spent in ways designed to help set this planet to rights, for until this is achieved there can be no future for any kind of space travel, and indeed such an enterprise is another of the perils faced by this planet. Let those living in this planet, including the Russians, Chinese, and all those who at this present time have wild ideas, including space stations on the moon, come to a realisation that no one on this planet has any understanding whatsoever as to how the universe works. 
Humanities, if they must, may run their, ruin their own planets, may fight to the death with each other, may so pollute and desecrate their own environment that it's no longer suitable to support life. And this has happened more than once already on this planet Earth. But they may not and must never be allowed to go freely into the universe and desecrate and ruin that. Only those like the nearest neighbours to this planet who have come to understanding and have lived without violence, without belligerence, and who know how to govern themselves, have to, and who have transformed their physical home into the beautiful Garden of Eden that this planet once was also. Only people of this kind of understanding can be allowed the freedom of the universe. They come and they watch, not only out of curiosity, but with the knowledge of the true violence and belligerence of the people who inhabit this planet. They have watched with shock and horror the wars that have taken place, even as far back as the Battle of Waterloo and Trafalgar, as man pitted against man inflicts terrible injuries one upon another. They watch again in the First and Second World Wars when men attacked one another and cruelly injured not only men engaged in the slaughter of each other, but men engaged casting death and despair from the skies to rain down terror, death and violation upon innocent women and children, caught up in the terrible folly of ignorant men who know no other way of solving their differences. Look at what's going on in Gaza now, that is so horrific. They know and realise the kind of horror such people would cause if they ever gained the knowledge and power to travel freely in the universe and can imagine what would happen if they should ever come to their own peaceful planet. They have been given instructions to destroy, to destroy any who ever stray too near to any of their craft. They are too afraid that this world's belligerent mankind may one day learn this knowledge and take their kind of violence to their planet. They are ever vigilant, and any such craft would be destroyed before it even pierced their atmosphere. Their vigilance is never ceasing. The creator lords know it too, and want to know that all space exploration must cease. It's not only a waste of the world's resources, but it could place the world's people in the deadly peril that has befallen other planets who came too clever, too intelligent, and refused to come to peaceful knowledge and understanding. Such peace... People must, for the sake of harmony of the universe, be destroyed. And there are those with great power continually set to police the universe who have been given instructions to bring immediate destruction to anyone who, heedless of warnings given to them, think that they may disrupt the universe. This, too, will be in the book when it is published. The, um, um, the account of, um, what was he called, um, Valiant Thor, who apparently came to Eisenhower and tried to persuade people to the Americans to give up their nuclear um, weapons, and eventually, after three years, returned to. He apparently came from the High Council of the Universe, and the um, Canadian Minister of Defence, um, what was his name? It's going out of my mind. Paul. Anyway, I'll think of it. You can look it up who died just recently, his, he talked about this often and he said, you know, basically we blew it. And the black American military complex refused to allow him. To, Eisenhower wanted to do as he suggested and to address the United Nations. Anyway, it was never allowed. People of this planet generally, I think, are kindly and nice, but we're not ruined. We're not run by kindly and nice people. Any attempt to place anything whatsoever on the moon's surface could result in a natural disaster of proportion unprecedented in this world's history. All nations must understand that the moon has an important task to do in the regulation of this world's weather and in many other important things. It is a dead planet placed there as part of the plan of the universe and must never be tampered with in any way. Also, the planets of Mars, Jupiter, Venus and many others in this galaxy are all dead or fallow planets and they, so they must remain unexplored. They too are part of the careful plan of the universe, a plan not in any way understood even by the most clever and knowledgeable astronomers of today in this modern world. Something of this understanding will be explained in the book. 
Finally, let the Government of England consider carefully and most important of all, secretly, if this message is going to have any success whatsoever. Let anyone who attempts to rule to do so with humanity, not mere striving to follow dead and foolish political principles that bring nothing but poverty and disaster to their country but with policies that, with intelligence and common sense, will bring something of the nobility of this nation, or bring back something of the nobility of this nation that will bring it to prosperity, to progression, and free it from political parties continually pitted against each other. Consider carefully, and most important of all, secretly, if this message is going to have any success whatsoever. Let everyone who attempts to rule do so with humility, not merely striving to follow dead and foolish political principles that bring nothing but poverty and disaster to their country, but with pol policies that with intelligence and common sense will bring back something of the nobility of this nation, that will bring it to prosperity, to progression, and free it from political parties continually pit pitted against each other working against each other, working always to cast ridicule and scorn at one another. Let all political parties look upon themselves like two people, two very different people, pledged together in holy matrimony, two people who, being quite different in temperament, pledge themselves to work together to compromise, but above all else, work for their mutual good and for the good and prosperity of their family. There should be more businessmen, I think, going into politics than these people who are just in politics for their own personal power. Let them have respect for each other as two such people must have if they are work together, uh, to work together in harmony. And let the people who cast votes for such people choose, chosen to rule begin to develop a new respect for those set up to govern over them. Let all political parties look upon themselves like two people, two very different people pledged together in holy matrimony. Two people who, being quite different in temperament, pledge themselves to work together to compromise, but above all else to work for their mutual good and for the good and prosperity of their family. Let them have respect for each other, as any two such people must have, if they are to work together in harmony. And let the people who cast votes for such people choose to rule begin to develop a new respect for those set up to govern over them and a new confidence and knowledge that at last there are those whose aims are not to push themselves forward in political intrigue, oblivious of the harm and destruction such government cannot help but bring its people. It's hoped that a copy of this will be photographed and sent to each member of Parliament and hopefully it will be read and carefully considered. Well, I think my mother might have done that, but... I don't think any of the people we have in government are particularly... There have been some good people. Um, I was very impressed with Andrew Bridgen. But um, strangely enough, despite his um, increase in his um, in vote in West Yorkshire or wherever it was, um, and the fact that he is a good businessman, um, his, the, the van carrying all his votes, which was four, year, four hours too late for the count, so he's no longer an MP. Funny that. Um, it is hoped that a copy of this will be photographed and sent to each member of Parliament, and hopefully all will read and carefully consider this document and all it contains. Let them be especially careful that this document never fall into the wrong hands. Let them understand that this British government is just as much as at war as it was not so very long ago, and the perils it faced of anything far, far worse than the ones it fought then. And very many brave men who gave their lives and suffered much, and have, after that suffering, could not honestly feel that they have achieved anything other than an uneasy peace, that they have won at such a great cost would really last or really achieve what the politicians had promised them it would. Yes, I mean, the last two wars were pointless. Let no... Let, let now be no promises to a worried nation that this is truly what this little country of England is today but a government that smilingly and truthfully with resolve and friendship 
carries out the instructions given in secret and in the end wins through in a way that will amaze the stunned, delighted nation. Let no one forget that in the end, when it all comes about, the world will watch amazed. They too will be stunned that the little nation of England can achieve so much in seeing this will... In, and in seeing this will perhaps see the error of their ways and follow suit. And the good that will be released into the world will be incalculable. Well, I don't know. Well, if this is supposed to be a secret to be acted upon by politicians, I do not trust those in power at the moment. This is my comment. So I'm making it public. At the present time, I have absolutely no faith in our politicians. There are, I am sure, many good men and women who have no voice in the way their present government is ruining the economy of this country, but hobbled by necessity, sit back and let it go on, get on with it. We, the public, are also at fault, and I've let this parlous state of affairs continue, allowing our government to take us into wars we have no wish to fight, and see our men have their lives squandered, to see our economies desecrated and our population put out of work, as our manufacturing and, events and inventions are sent to China, to see our farming destroyed, to see all our... our utilities sold off to foreign businessmen who asset strip them and let the infrastructure crumble so that sewage is presently being poured into our seas and our rivers, to watch our politicians stand by as people who will never settle or will, as people who will never settle or fit into this country flood in unchecked. I believe that the huge numbers of young men of military age who are flocking to our shores are no more nor less than, than mercenaries who will be used to control the population when things get so bad that even the most indolent of our number will complain. The French Revolution did not come about through the poor rising up against the rich. It was contrived. The Duc d'Orléans, who was the cousin of Louis XVI and the richest man in Europe as he had opened the grounds of the Palais Royal to gaming and prostitution, from which he took a cut, paid for all the grain to be sent out of Paris so that the people started to starve, and then he paid for Italian mercenaries to brought in to raise insurrection. People do not just run, run out of their houses and revolt. It has to be organised. The terror that ensued resulted in many of the French people escaping to other areas in Europe, as well as England. The greatest number who escaped were the poor and desperate, followed by a large number of Catholic priests, and the smallest number were the aristocrats. Eventually, the revolutionary government, having taken advantage of the Duc d'Orléans' money to carry out their wicked plans, realised that he was doing it in the hopes that he would be made king in his in his country, in his cousin's stead. So they gilded him as, him as well. I'm not sure if anyone mourned him. In fact, in 1976, the Daily Mail carried an article which showed how um, Arthur Cargill looked exactly like the Duke de Orléans and showed the two uh, things. And the funny thing was that um, Arthur Scargill ran the miners' strike in exactly the way he started up this problems in um, the French Revolution. He sent all the, the strike pay from the miners' union to banks in France and he organised um, flying pickets. Interesting that, isn't it? Anyway, and he's voted himself in to be um, king of the miners' union for life, I think. Right, that's the end of that dictation.